I think people are slowly making their way here from the other sessions, so we can we can get started. So good morning, everyone. Um, welcome to today's um, five days in May practical skill session titled "Recruiting Made Easy," which is being hosted for you today by Fraser Health. So today is the final day of these sessions. It's been uh, quite an amazing month of learning. Uh, being inspired and being stimulated through the many presentations, which would not have been possible if not for the collaboration between um, the health authorities in British Columbia. My name is Patrick Altejos, and I'm a manager of uh, clinical trials and business development uh, unit with Fraser Health's Department of Evaluation and Research Services. And I have the pleasure to introduce you to um, our speaker today. And but to start us off, um, it, as in a good way, I'd like to acknowledge the land and the names of people whose land we live on. I'm honored and privileged to be joining you here today from Surrey, BC, within the traditional and ancestral unceded shared territories of Katsi, Kwantlen, Kwikwitlam, Semiyamu, and Tuwasan First Nations. I'd like to invite you all to also, um, please feel free to share in the chat an acknowledgement of, of the land that you're on. I'll give that a few, uh, a few seconds. So today, at the end of this hour, you will know things about patient recruitment you don't know now, and something among those things that you will know will make a difference in the success of the study that you're managing or leading. Today we have Stephanie Chia. She is a Clinical Trials BC Manager of the REACH BC, uh, the recently launched online platform that connects British Columbians with health, of, health research projects such as clinical trials and patient partner research opportunities. In her previous role, Stephanie led the BC Health Research Connection <clears throat> Demonstration Project Team that designed and developed the REACH BC platform. As REACH BC manager, she engages with provincial stakeholders to support recruitment into health research studies and trials and engage with patient partners and patient-oriented research. So with that, I'd like to welcome Steph, Stephanie. Thank you, Patrick, and thank you for the welcome and introduction. I'm going to switch to share my presentation slide now. Is it sharing the right screen? Okay. so. Thank you for joining today's uh, talk on the last day of five days in May. Um, we're excited to tell you more about ReachBC in this presentation we called Recruiting Made Easy, Learn How to Find Study Participants Using ReachBC. So this presentation is targeted for health researchers or people who are doing research projects that are looking for study participants. Um, I am the ReachBC manager and I was supposed to be joined by my colleague, Ashley Quigley today our marketing and communication specialist. Unfortunately, she became ill, so she was not able to, to present. Um, she's recovering at home, okay, doing okay. Um, but I will be presenting her slides and hopefully I'll do a good job with that. But if not, uh, she will be available. Her contact information will be available at the end for you to contact her directly. Um, both of us are under the uh, part of the Michael Smith Health Research BC organization, specifically the Clinical Trials BC unit. So um, before I start uh, telling you about ReachBC, I thought I would share a few quotes directly from health researchers who have used and currently are using ReachBC for recruitment. So um, these researchers have all shared their research projects to ReachBC um, in order to find study participants or patient partners for their research projects. And they've all kind of um, been having the same experience where they find ReachBC is great for connecting them to the people that they need to reach, um, people, patients, people in the community, um, and a, a way that they can effectively communicate their research project um, opportunity with the public. And I will tell you a little bit more about how you, ReachBC does that. So we are a publicly funded provincial platform uh, with the whole goal of connecting British Columbians to health research opportunities. So we have a website at reachbc.ca where we, you can go and find search for health research opportunities in the province. Um, we are 
under the Clinical Trials BC um, unit of Michael Smith Health Research BC organization. And that was uh, recently in 2021, we moved under there when we launched the ReachBC platform. So it's kind of a great home for us um, being publicly funded with a provincial scope to reach, uh, to both support health researchers and um, reach the British Columbians. Why did we build ReachBC? Uh, it, the reason was there was, we saw there was a need, essentially uh, a public poll in that, um, a public poll that was done a few years ago asked British Columbians whether they would be interested in participating in health research and the majority of them responded yes they would be interested. Um, however, when they asked where if they knew where to find those research opportunities, it was a much smaller percentage 15% that knew where to go to find out how to participate in health research so that was a quite significant gap that we want to try to close. Um, and another poll that was done um, regarding participation in clinical trials also sh uh, showed similar results that people want to see a benefit to clinical trials that provides both benefit to society and also a personal benefit. And people are willing to somewhat or very willing to participate in a clinical trial. So this was an interest that we wanted to capture and help um, guide those people to give them a place to find those health research opportunities and clinical trials to participate in. Uh, and the whole purpose is behind ReachBC is really to raise awareness about health research in the province, um, assist researchers with their recruitment needs, and get more British Columbians participating in health research. So we took this idea of this participate in research bulletin board where you see many researchers currently do, continue to do this is post their research study, a poster regarding their research study and put it on the bulletin board with their little telephone number on a tearaway piece of paper, hoping that the right person walks by that bulletin board, sees their poster, takes their number and contacts them about participating in it. Um, that is one way to reach out and recruit participants. And we are trying to just make it easier, bring that idea of a bulletin board and bring it online where it can be seen by way more people instead of just the right person walking in that hospital or health center at that time. So we have on our website, the, what we call the ReachBC directory. So this is the provincial database of research health research projects that are looking uh, that are currently active looking for people to participate in, in. Um, you can search we have a search bar there you can search by health topic um, so like alzheimer's disease or mental health um, various health health categories you can also filter your search results and look for things that are located near you um, search by a researcher's name institution plus a lot more based on um, like even age and different demographics, and we'll return the list of results uh, on our ReachBC directory. We've recently added this visual map uh, part of this directory, so you can actually see where those research opportunities are located. Um, this was done, this was launched a few months ago, and this whole project to add all these features and the enhanced filters was done in partnership with the BC support unit, so I just kind of want to call out that uh, acknowledge that partnership and the group that was involved with the development of that because it was it did take some time. Um, part of the enhancements that we did also included um, adding past studies to our being able to share and post the past studies on our ReachBC directory. So once a project is completed the recruitment phase, they can update their status to close recruitment or even completed project and we'll share it under this past studies filter on the directory. So it's a way that your research project can still be visible and uh, found by the public to share, uh, to keep that information publicly available for people and, and continue to raise awareness about health research. We also added uh, a flag for specific studies that are doing patient-oriented research. So um, people can search for patient-oriented research to know um, whether uh, projects had involved patient partners in their project. And for any of you that aren't familiar with patient-oriented research, it is it really just means that it's patient, research that's done in partnership with patients, and it's about answering research questions that matter to patients in order with overall aim to improve healthcare. Um, and patients is a definition that's uh, broad, broadly to include individuals who have a personal experience with the health issue, and also includes their informal caregivers, such as family members and friends. Um, this is getting to be more and more common and popular that research health researchers are involving patient partners in their 
in their research projects um, at that level. There's even a recent um, update to a guideline for clinical studies that calls out engaging stakeholders in study design. So stakeholders can be like the investigators and the research team, but also the patient partners or study participants and patient partner organizations with the whole goal to, to really be designing a, a clinical study that is thinking about quality from the very beginning. Um, so there's a lot of opportunities for um, patient partners to be involved with um, different in different ways with health research. So if you are interested in learning more about what, how it, what it means to work with patient partners, doing patient-oriented research, um, you can go visit the BC Support Unit. They have a lot of resources and people to help there. And if you're an investigator doing clinical studies and want to start getting uh, patient partners involved with your clinical research study, Clinical Trials BC also has um, tools and things to get involved with that. Okay, so let's hope this works. So I'd like to start with a little poll of our audience today. And the first question, which I will be launching in a moment is, um, have you engaged patients in your research study design before? So basically, have you, have you done patient-oriented research before? Yes or no? Um, and if it doesn't apply to you, you can click the third option um, just to get a sense of whether this is a new, a new idea for any of you or not. And I'll just leave it another, give you another 20 seconds to finish that off. Okay, and I will see what our results are. So if everyone can see the results, it looks like it's a mixed bag. So, well, most of you, 41% have engaged patient partners in the past. So that's quite good. I, I, I think uh, the BC Support Unit has been promoting patient-oriented research for quite some time now. And I think this will slowly become definitely more and more common and, and required from health researchers. So thanks for sharing. Uh, another thing that we added with our update to the ReachBC directory was the ability to share your research study results on ReachBC. So this is quite exciting because it's been known for some time that um, researchers should be providing these results or findings back to the public. And this is now a way that you can do it through ReachBC. Um, when you look up um, the studies on the ReachBC directory, we'll have a flag whether results are available for that specific project. And when you click on that project to learn more, um, you can share a, a lay summary of your results, findings, as well a little bit of information about any study limitations that there might have been, and a place where you can share links to additional resources, like uh, knowledge translation products that might have been developed, um, a link to your website, or, or even a file to download, like an infographic or um, other information you might want to share for the public about that project. And I think that's a really great way for researchers to close the loop on um, really letting the participants know what their um, what happened, what was the outcome of their participation? Um, why should you share your study results? It's really a way for you can transfer knowledge about some of the things that you've learned from your study. It improves the study participation satisfaction and it will meet uh, national and international guidelines that will be requiring this. Uh, in a clinical trials BC survey, um, there, was there were comments that were saying that their experience with participation was disappointing because they never received the results and they really wanted to have those results um, provided to them. So um, we really encourage researchers to take a look at that field uh, on ReachBC. Um, you can even share now your, because we were posting those past studies, if you didn't use ReachBC to recruit, but you do have study findings, you can add those to our ReachBC directory as a way to just let people know what were the findings and uh, results of your study. Okay, so it's time for the second poll, which is, have you shared your study results with participants before? That's open. Five seconds left. Okay, and let's see the results here. Um, it's a also about even almost even split with maybe more saying no. Um, yeah, so I 
again, it's, it's something that's quite important. And I think it'll be beneficial to both the participants, obviously, but also to the researchers as it improves, um, it improves the participants overall experience, which will lead them to have a, that good experience will transfer over to any uh, future research projects that they might want to participate in. Whereas if they have a negative experience in their first time, um, they might not want to participate in any future health research projects. So for um, the people that want to know more about health research, um, they've come to the site and maybe searched our database, but they really want to know how, what, what, what health research projects are meant for them. They want to get more personalized matches. They want to know about future projects ahead of time so they don't have to come back to our site to search the directory all the time. We have this profile called the ReachBC Volunteer. Essentially, anyone can come to ReachBC to sign up, create a profile, volunteer profile that we ask them some information like um, their date of birth, sex, gender, where they're located, um, some of their preferences, they'll select um, how much they wanna travel. And then uh, we have a huge menu of health research categories that they can pick and select the types of health research that they want to know about and based on that profile that we create they created we will we have a little matching engine that will match them to research projects we have in our database and show them those that they might be eligible for once they get a chance to review what that research project is about they can um, decide that they want to get connected to the research team and we can help facilitate that connection so we'll be helping uh, providing their contact information to the researcher in order for the researcher to, to contact them and follow up with them so this is what the volunteers dashboard looks like when they log in for the, maybe the first time, they'll, they'll see all these matches on their dashboard it says matched here and they'll, they can see the title of it. And then they click on one of the projects, they're taken to a page, which is what we call the detailed study posting. And on this detailed study posting, they learn about the purpose, estimated commitment, what's involved. And then there's additional inclusion exclusion criteria um, and then a little bit about the eligibility on the side here uh, with some contacts about who's running the study and who the, the primary contact would be. And then they're presented two buttons here that says, I'm interested, contact me, or I'm not interested, and they wanna delete this project from their dashboard. But if they found that they read through it and they were interested and they think that they are eligible for it, they click this button, I'm interested, contact me. And at that point, we will put their contact information name phone number, email on the researcher's uh, list, contact list. So when a researcher logs in, they can see a list of people who were interested, clicked interested in their project uh, for them to follow up with and consent to their project. So a little bit about um, who, what volunteers have to say about participating in research. These are three uh, ReachBC volunteers who we connected with about when we were making some videos regarding ReachBC. Um, they've had really positive experiences um, using ReachBC to find opportunities to participate in research. They thought it was fun. Uh, they thought participating in research was fun. Uh, it was easy and they got like a good warm feeling about participating in research and they did it to kind of just benefit the greater, greater community with their participation. So um, it's been really great to hear some of this feedback from people who have been uh, participating in research. Now for researchers who are wanting to share their project on ReachBC, so you're re recruiting, um, looking for study participants or patient study participants, um, these are just the steps that you need to take. It's pretty simple. We ask that the principal investigator, as well as any team member who might be responsible for following up with the interested volunteers, create a ReachBC researcher account. Once you log in to your account, you'll be presented with a form. You can click on and enter in your research study information and eligibility criteria. Um, we'll do a quick review to make sure it looks good. And we'll ask you to submit that study posting to your research ethics board. So it's usually, if it's already been approved, it'll be a very minimal um, review from the REB, just checking the language of the study posting. Um, then you'll come back to submit your REB certificate to reach BC for us to just check off that that's been done. And um, we can then approve it and it'll get posted live to the ReachBC directory. So publicly searchable on the directory, but also our system will find any matched volunteers immediately 
they'll see your uh, volunteer who matched the criteria um, would see it on their dashboard. So I'm going to try to switch screens now to show you a very short demo of the site. If I can get the right screen up. Um, I think I could get So I'm going to show you the site now. This is our ReachBC website. Um, so I'm just on the Find Studies tab, which is where you go to the ReachBC directory. And we have a few quick links here if you're searching for COVID-19 studies, patient related studies, or if you want to see everything. But I'm going to just type in a field of heart failure here. So we'll return a few results. So currently there's two in the heart failure category, heart areas um, that are currently recruiting and they showed up on the map, I believe. Oh no, these are online, so they didn't show up on the map. But if there, there was a location, they would be um, a pinpoint on the map. And you can see for past studies, uh, we had four projects under heart failure with the, the status is now recruitment closed. Um, I just want to point out this project here, which is both patient oriented and they filled in their results form. So um, we can take a look at that. This is the project information that gets displayed on the public. It's not the full details of um, what someone would see as a ReachBC volunteer when they log in, but it's a good summary of what this project is about. And then if someone wants to learn about the project results, they can see that here. Because this project is patient oriented, um, we also ask what their patient engagement strategies were. So this team is sharing like, how do they engage patient partners in their research? And this is maybe something that researchers, you might find useful to know, like how have other researchers um, involved patient partners in their project. So now I will switch to um, the actual login of the ReachBC app, I guess, part of it. I'm gonna log in as a researcher when you log in as a researcher, you will be asked to, we ask you for your mobile number because this is a two-factor authentication site um, as you just for extra layer security because you'll be accessing um, participant information through your dashboard. This is what a reach, re researcher dashboard looks like. Um, these are all the projects that I have been listed on as either a team member or if I've submitted it myself. Um, and at the top, there's two buttons to take you to the two different forms. If you're looking for study participants, you would take this form. If you're looking for patient partners, you would fill in this form. Um, and this is just a test study. I'd like to just show you what that looks like, um, where you can see all the information here. I could edit it if I wanted to. Um, and this is a tab called Manage Volunteers. This is where anyone who had clicked that button, I'm interested to contact me, would show up with the, all this information here um, for the research team to contact. And this is the results form. So you can click to edit results here. So I'm just going to switch back to the PowerPoint. So um, I want to share just about, we went live in March of 2020. Oh, no, April 2020, sorry. So right at the beginning of the pandemic, we decided to put Make ReachBC Live. This was a little bit earlier than what we had originally scheduled for making ReachBC Live, but everyone was sent home. We thought it was ReachBC was ready to go um, and we wanted to make it available for both people in the, the public to see, but also researchers who had to work from home and pivot their research studies to being online. Um, so we've been slowly working on adding more volunteers to our database. We're currently at about 4,000 ReachBC volunteers. Um, this is the breakdown of how of the demographics. So right now we have quite a lot in the younger demographic, 18 to 30, but well, uh, we've been building the over 50 uh, population as well. Um, and you can see that there's a significant amount in the lower mainland, but we are doing a lot of um, different strategies right now to increase our volunteer data of our volunteers from you know, the interior, uh, more rural regions, the north, uh, we'll be doing a, a few different strategies in order to get more volunteers in those regions. And for our research projects, we mostly have research studies posted. 
but we have about almost 20% of them are, are opportunities that are seeking patient partners. Um, we, the top health research categories that are in our reach, reach BC directory are listed here. So health systems and technology, general health and wellness, mental health and behavior COVID-19. And you can see in the orange asterisk, these are the top selected volunteer categories. So the volunteer profiles, they're, they're looking for these types of research projects. I also just wanted to share that we are, one of the ways we're, we're building that volunteer database is this partnership that we have going with the BC Center for Disease Control. Um, they have a consent to contact uh, registry of people, COVID-19 patients who they were asked, do you consent to be contacted about COVID-19 research? If yes, um, they were also asked if they wanted their information shared with ReachBC. So there's currently 50,000 participants in that, oh, sorry, I think it's more than that, 60,000 participants in that registry, but we have a, a portion of them will be added to ReachBC or invited to, to join ReachBC. And we're working on doing that very soon. We're just doing some, uh, finalizing some information sharing agreements. Uh, we also did these posters or specific marketing um, about help helping to fight COVID-19. And these are posters that were distributed at um, health authority sites, vaccine clinics, and test COVID-19 test sites. So that was another way we were um, letting COVID-19, uh, people who are interested in COVID-19 research know about ReachBC. So I will talk a little bit about the marketing strategy uh, of how we're building our ReachBC volunteer data, database up. The pre-recruitment phase is, was really like things we wanted to do to prepare in order to, to get more people to come to ReachBC and sign up. So we developed four videos um, telling different stories, one for, specifically for the public and how to be, what it means to be a research participant, one about patient partners, one for researchers, and then a general one. And these are really great. Um, they're all on our website and we, will, we can share a link to these uh, videos as well from our YouTube channel. Um, we really wanted to use those videos to inspire people, educate them about health research and what it means to participate in health research. And we also updated our volunteer signup form to be much shorter than what it previously was. So it's a, a one page uh, form that can be filled out quite quickly to keep it simple for people and, and remove any barriers to signing up. Then we did a revamp of some of our marketing materials. So this is a really new uh, brochure that a trifold brochure that was created for um, the public, just letting them know about uh, volunteering in health research with QR codes that take them to our website. Um, these are all printed now and they're ready to be placed in waiting rooms, clinics, um, anywhere where people might want this information. We have a lot of, uh, the boxes are currently in my living room. <laughs> And we also did a different version of it as a postcard. So um, a little bit of a pared down inf information on this postcard, again, with a QR code that takes them to the site. These postcards could be, again, put in waiting rooms or they could be mailed out to people or handed out at events. And then we started phase one of the strategy, which was um, a digital campaign that ran from February till just the end of May, or today is the last day of this digital campaign which included Google ads, uh, Google search, Google ad display ads, as well as Facebook ads, all with the purpose to increase uh, awareness, drive people to visit our site and learn more, um, sign up in, as a volunteer. And then one of the other phase one strategies is we'll be emailing those COVID-19 patients that I mentioned from the CDC's uh, consent to contact registry. Um, part of the digital campaign was we, we drove people to what we created as a landing page this is a very uh, short version of our ReachBC website with just some of the essential information and wanting them to click on join ReachBC as the main um, call to action here. So that's been very successful. We had maybe, a, I think over a thousand people coming to this landing page in the last three months and, and a lot of them converted to um, become a volunteer. So we um, are continuing to add to our volunteer database. I mentioned we'll be tackling some more, um, probably doing some more strategy around targeting the rural areas to build up that and, and also just creating a more um, wider demographic of who's in ReachBC. Um, 
So we will be connecting with the CDC to get their to to transfer the information from their consent to contact uh, registry. But we know there's also other similar consent to contact lists or permission to contact lists. And that's something else we want to approach with those groups to see whether it makes sense to invite them to join ReachBC, invite the people on the list to join ReachBC. Um, we have our brochures and marketing materials ready to go and distribute on site. We're also developing some posters which will have QR codes that can be placed in different areas and, and hopefully have drive, uh, lead people to sign up to reach BC. Um, and then for researchers, we would like more re research projects added to our reach BC directory as well. So we will like to do more research meetings like today's presentation happy to present at department meetings, any, um, anywhere with where there might be health researchers who, who, who could be using ReachBC to share their projects. Um, we'll work with any communications departments um, on creating articles or um, sharing information about ReachBC with a user story, perhaps for a newsletter. Um, and then any other partnerships and collaborations that make sense for an organization or a research uh, group of uh, we're happy to hear more ideas about what we could work, do to, together. And then one specific strategy is we are reactivating uh, what we call ReachBC registration sites. These were um, health clinics or health centers who we had um, listed to that were going to help us sign up their patients or clients that they see. Um, to join ReachBC. So this was something that we had about two years ago. We had to pause it when, with the pandemic um, when no one was uh, doing anything in person, but now we feel like it's about time. It seems like the right time to, to reapproach this, reactivate this. Um, essentially at a health clinic or center where a lot of people are coming in, we'll have a table or maybe at the check-in desk, um, there, the patient would be asked, are you interested in learning more about health research? If yes, they would be pointed to sign up into Reach BC. Um, we have a uh, ability to assign registration site codes. So we will give a registration site a code that can be linked to a specific volunteer when they're signing up. And then um, it gives the registration site the ability to track all the volunteers that they've signed up under that one code. Um, so we'll be, um, I'm, I've already approached a few, a few registration sites and we're, we're looking for more. So if you're interested, please let me know. So this is a resource that we've developed or Ashling developed. Uh, we call it the ReachBC Toolkit. Essentially, it's a digital toolkit, toolkit that we can share with researchers that, can, that you can use to however you'd like. We have the digital file for the brochure, the postcard, links to our videos, um, an FAQ document for questions that are frequently asked by the public if they want to know more about ReachBC. We have, um, this is an email signature that you could add to your own email if you are, you know, communicating regularly with patients or study participants. You could even put your registration site code there in the email um, footer if you'd like that, that people can know to sign up uh, under your registration site code. And then we have a couple PowerPoint slides that can be added to a PowerPoint slide deck if you're presenting at a research conference or something to the community. Um, you can share information about ReachBC with those slides. Um, and all that is really meant to um, support, really, really we're looking for support for ReachBC in the sense that um, we want to be able to share your research projects. And if you'd like to partner with us to become what we call this ReachBC ambassador, um, share any new research projects or, or even past projects and your study results on our ReachBC directory, partner together to do community outreach, um, sharing of mar our marketing materials, working together to do some newsletter um, articles, um, speaking at events, and then that toolkit and sharing our video library or, or through social media channels, we are open to that conversation with, the, with all hoping to really raise awareness about your health research project and help with your recruitment of, um, to get more people signed up into the volunteer database, which will help with recruitment. So uh, that is the end. Uh, I have one more poll before we um, go on. It's just essentially um, after what you heard today, if you are likely to use ReachBC for recruitment for either um, study participants or 
you can also use it to find patient partners to do patient-oriented research for your project. Okay, I'll give it 10 more seconds before I close the poll. Okay, and our results show very likely to not like, like some not likely, maybe it's not the right um, tool for your research pro uh, recruitment project. But um, for those who are willing, are likely to use it, um, yeah, if you have any questions about it, please contact us and we have a lot of resources and tools to help you. We can even have a meeting if there's any questions about how to do that. Um, and for those who don't know yet, <laughs> you can also feel free to reach out to me about um, any questions you might have. So uh, I'd like to end with acknowledging all the people that were involved with um, developing ReachBC and the operations of ReachBC. We have our executive lead, Dr. Robert McMaster, Allison Orth, who's the director of ReachBC and also Clinical Trials BC, Robin, our project coordinator, Ashling, who wasn't here today, um, our Reach BC Advisory Committee, which is a provincial uh, committee with representation from, from the health authorities, research, research institutes, and patient partners, as well as all our past con contributors and funders. As we had, we did do an extensive um, planning and development phase with the community, with our stakeholders across the health authorities and uh, the researchers, and um, thanks to the current organizations that are partnered with us. Um, so if you have any questions, you can contact me at the email here. Um, Ashling is our, if you have any questions about marketing and communications, you could contact Ashling. Um, so I do, I do also want to thank Fraser Health as you are, as being a ReachBC ambassador and has been very helpful in sharing ReachBC materials um, around um, with the COVID posters and, um, different different and on the website so so we are we're very grateful for that too and i would open the floor to questions now so steph there's a couple of questions in the chat the first from salima and who can create a login account from the research team at reach bc yes okay um, so ReachBC is for health, health researchers with um, an academic affiliation or health authority appointment employed by the health authority. And you can, we need the principal investigator to create an account. And we also, anyone on their research team, so it could be research coordinator, research, um, research assistant, anyone who's kind of helping with that recruitment. They do need to have their email address from an approved um, health authority or university in, in the sense that they can't be using a Gmail account. So um, a, a legitimate employee of one of those two um, groups, the uh, health authority or academic, um, an academic affiliation. Excellent. And uh, you have another question from John. Does Reach BC have a working relationship with the BC Patient Quality and Safety Council and or the Patient Voices Network? Yes, yes, we do. Um, so when we were designing ReachBC, we knew that uh, this Patient Voices Network is has a little bit of a similar um, goal in the sense that they are also sharing opportunities that healthcare uh, healthcare patients can get involved with, like with a healthcare project. Um, the difference is that Patient Voices Network shares um, quality improvement projects are things that are considered outside the health research um, environment. So things that don't, that are more about, um, you know, clinical care delivery. And we are specifically for health research, but this, the people could be the same as patients that are involved with both those clinical design projects, but also um, health research projects. So they actually cross post our health research projects. Um, the ones that are looking for patient partners um, they listed as an external opportunity on their website and they link, um, they forward people over to ReachBC. And that's the division between research, the PVN and 
reach BC. We we're actually going to be at the BC the safe the BC Safety and Quality Council's Quality Forum, which is running tomorrow and Thursday. We'll have an exhibitor booth there um, to to let the patients and the public know about reach BC. It's like another way that they can get involved is not only um, it, they can also get involved in health research. Um, thanks. And then we have another question from Megan. If a study is posted looking to enroll patient partners, is it also cost posted to PBN? Yes, that, that, is it. that is how it works. So we haven't cross posted their opportunities, but they, they post our reach BC opportunities um, so that if um, you're looking for patient partners, it'll be show up on their external opportunities on the PBN page and it links back to Reach BC's website. Then you have a comment from Jennifer that uh, she hung her Reach BC posters around the Greater Victoria immunization sites on behalf of Island Health Research and what a thrill it is to see how it contributed to the bigger picture. That's awesome. Thank you, Jennifer. Thank you. Yeah, I was in Victoria on Friday and I did see the poster up at one of the research buildings. So I took a selfie with it and I was happy to see that it was up and hope, hopefully people are, are seeing that. We do, we will be having um, new posters printed that aren't COVID-19 specific. So as people are getting tired of uh, COVID-19, we'll have a more general um, general poster with a QR code that people can use to, to get to reach BC. Um, then another question um, from Amy Booth. A lot of the studies in our lab recruits patients through physicians and nurse practitioners in the community. We are always looking for more healthcare providers to join our studies. Would there be a place on Reach BC for this? Or do you know of anywhere that would be appropriate? Yeah, so the our volunteer database, we haven't specifically targeted nurse practitioners or the healthcare providers, but we do, we ha I have seen some opportunities opportunities posted on reach bc that were specifically looking for those uh professions and it's written in the description of this on the study posting like we are seeking healthcare provider um i i'd have to check how how successful they've been using reach bc because i think the main demographic of our database might be um more of just the general public but but you know there's people that have signed up and are um and are those professions. It's just, we haven't specifically targeted signing them up to become Reach BC volunteers, um, but maybe that's something we can discuss of like, how, how is that, uh, we might be able to, to support that in one of our marketing strategies. So Steph, I have a question. Um, I, um, I personally, I have filled out a profile for Reach BC and I have been successful in becoming a patient partner myself for two different research studies. So it's really great. The matching program like right. totally works. And um, I'm just wondering in terms of the demographics, I noticed that men, it kind of like leveled out um, for the age groups. And then that women, there were more women in the younger age groups and then it declines. Um, what, why do you think there's that trend and, and how are you, um, trying to reach out to mm -hmm. more of the people that you don't have. Yeah, um, as part of our, our next strategy is really to make sure our database is, our volunteer database is representative as much as possible to the BC population. Um, we, I'm not really sure why it's a younger female demographic. I know that females are generally more likely to be in these types of databases and, and even participate in research. But I think um, that's something that Ashling and I will talk about on like a uh, strategy to, you know, get more maybe men or the different age groups or, and then especially the different uh, regional people from the different regions that we that are underrepresented in our volunteer database. So there's a, probably a few different strategies we'll try to um, do. I, I guess one easy way, easier way is the digital campaign. You can kind of narrow down like who's as on Facebook anyway, like who sees your ad. Um, that's one way, but I think we'll need to partner with some organizations like, and do some more public community events. So if there was like a men's health awareness type of event, kind of be there to let people know and maybe do some specific, um, 
ads almost that would target those different uh, populations we're looking for. I have a follow-up question for you, Steph. I'm actually, um, <clears throat> I'm actually, I also have an account on Reach BC, and I'm just wondering um, for those of us who might be, for some people who might be um, hesitant to sign up on anything online and provide their information. What sort of things you do to sort of assure them that this is, uh, you know, your your information yes. is secure with us? Yes. So uh, we did a lot of. Uh, work. It actually took, it's probably why it was delayed so long. It was like the amount of work that it took to do our privacy and security assessment, making sure that how we built ReachBC was um, safe and secure and compliant with the different regulations. Um, essentially for, for the, the way the system is built with the firewall and, and you have to have very strict um, ways on how you can access the database that's it's protected. And it's right now we're hosted at, under UBC's University of British Columbia servers. And we had complied with the university's um, guidelines on, on how that's the hosting is, is there. Um, so we did conduct a full security threat risk assessment, um, you know, something that was reviewed and, and a privacy impact assessment, something that was reviewed at, on a provincial level to ensure that um, the different health authorities were also aware of how we've built and we're built, we built Reach PC's platform. Um, for researchers, they, you know, like I showed you, there's a two-factor authentication um, method where if you're going to log into your account to access and you'll have access to some personal information of people who are click interested, um, there's that. And then for the volunteers information, you're, you, they have control on who gets to see their contact information. So we're not just, just because you match to a project, it doesn't mean that your information gets, you'll be contacted by all these uh, researchers. Cause a lot of it might not, you might not be interested or you don't have the time. You're not just gonna be having a lot of people calling you unless you want them to call you about a project. Um, so we kind of left it in the control of the ReachBC volunteer to say that they want to be contacted. And that's when the connection happens. At the end of the questions. Great. So I think I don't see any more questions come in. So um, again, that's uh, thank you, Stephanie, for that very informative um, presentation. Uh, it's very helpful. Um, so in, in closing, I'd also like to congratulate all the speakers um, uh, and special thanks to to our organizer, uh, Camille Gray for for Fraser Health, uh, and uh, thank thank all of thank you guys. Um, you know who you've made this um, five days in May sessions possible um, and see you all at the next session. Appreciate it. Thank you. Take care. Great presentation, Steph. Bye everyone.